have this saying, as the aeroplanes get smaller, the places get more epic. We're about to descend into King Salmon. This place rocks. A small plane flight off to our lodge, and you're going to see some Alaskan goodness. We have finally arrived. Such a cool part of the world. When I say cool, it's only about 15 degrees. But let me just say this, I don't think I've ever been to a place with a cooler name than King Salmon. It's a short flight from Anchorage and here we are, King Salmon. Beautiful flight, the scenery is amazing. This is pretty much it. Airport, pub, well, that's it. Well, that was a pretty epic 20 minute flight. As we come in then, we actually saw three brown bears, Jetty. We sure did. And some of the fish in the river, Christy, they're like this big. I could see schools of fish and I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> I think it's time for us to hit the lodge and then hit the river. How you going? Good, thanks. Jacob, nice short run from the lodge. How far have we actually travelled? Uh, about eight miles today, down and river. What fish am I seeing rise there? Uh, that's predominantly chum salmon. There's a couple pinks in there and maybe a couple uh, jack kings. Is there any particular reason the chum hold here? Yeah, there's a subsurface gravel bar. It creates a little bit of a softer water, slower moving water, and a little bit of a deeper hole. And uh, it's just real ideal water from the hold. I oh, think I can see plenty. Let's go yeah. catch them. Yeah, all right. That is easy. Oh, look at that! Is that dark patch there? Yeah, all here, all along here. Wow. Got him. Nice. Oh, that's a big fish. Woo. Is he still going? He's still going. Look at him, look at him coming nice. upstream. Oh, oh, my oh, he's coming at me. He's coming at me. Oh, gosh. My real fish still on. <laughs> okay. I'm still going to fish on here, but my real is falling off the rod. <laughs> here, you fight him on the rope. You fight him on the, uh, the, the, yeah, okay. the line, and I'll get the reel. <laughs> it's all. So keep tension, keep yeah, tension. Okay. Strip, 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 strip. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> Oh, he's jumping! It's all the boys! Alright, you're good, you're good, you're good. Go, go, go! Oh my goodness me, that has never happened to me, ever! All the vibrations have worked the real loose! Oh, and he's coming at me again, this guy's a jumper! That is just, oh, epic stuff! That is so cool, he caught me so quick, I could not wind quick enough. Jacob, you're a star. Oh, that's all right. Teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, man, he was going so quick. It was like six inches of water, like a wave coming off the fly line. How's that, mate? Oh, great. Woo. Oh. Now, Jacob, I've been fishing for about, I can tell you exactly, I started fishing when I, I caught my first fish when I was 12. Yeah. I think I did about four years before they never caught a fish. <laughs> And in over 30 years, I've never had the real fall off the rod while oh, I was fishing. Yeah. I see it happen actually, uh, not often, but it's not an uncommon event. 
that was just the craziest thing ever. But think you just do it and you're going up and down in the boat. Oh, yeah. So good tip there. Always check that you're real or secure, mate. I've got his Yeah, if worse comes to worse, you can always just... Nice. Use the line on your finger like you did. Unbelievable. This is a beautiful fish too, man. For you, mate. That is a cracker. And I just hope that we get to show you what a silver chum looks like. Or just take a look at this photo. I'll give you a clear indication. From silver <laughs> to this, how many days approximately? Uh, well, the chums actually will uh, change pretty fast. They're the fastest changing salmon. And uh, I'd say this guy's probably been in the river for about a week and a half. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, I call them zombie chum. Technically, they're not a zombie till they're starting to actually decay. Yeah, yeah. So they're so, swimming around with one eye hanging out. Yeah, so actually, so as they come up here uh, and their, their body transforms, um, they start to actually, they rot. And after they're done spawning, they'll be uh, swimming around with with flesh hanging off them and uh, pus coming out. And... That's a lovely story for <laughs> yeah, all the kids really. out there. But you know it is, it's nature. I think yeah. it's time to see what else this river has to hold. Yeah. Interesting fact, Alaska's Yukon River is 3,300 kilometers long, which makes it the third largest river in the United States of America. But it's three kilometers upstream from the lodge, you will find the char hole. Now I'm assuming, Jacob, it's char by name, char by nature. Yeah, as you can see behind us, there's this creek that flows in. It's a little bit of colder temperature, a little tannic water, and the char like to hang out here because of that. Sounds like a plan. So I just got to ask, what are our chances of catching a char? Oh, 100%. Love the way it thinks. This char rig is pretty technical, so I'll just show you the simple bit at the bottom. That little bead there is meant to represent a salmon egg. Looks just like a piece of salmon roe. You've got to match the hatch. There's actually salmon on the beds here spawning. The char come up behind them, eat the eggs. That little hook there hangs nice and low. You can snap them in the jaw, catch a beautiful fish. So it's just a matter of watching that float, and as soon as it gets pulled under, strike. Because if you don't strike quickly, they'll drop it. Nice. Oh, that is solid. Now, I let that all the way out yeah. past those salmon beds. Yeah. And I think the plan has worked. Is there a chance I could have a salmon? He feels solid. Uh, I don't know. I think it's, I'm going to put my money on a char, but he might be a nice one. He's actually swimming upstream, but he's got some weight. This six weight is fully bent. Oh, that little float. Why <laughs> do you put the eyes and mouth on the float? Oh, it's just to personalize it a little bit. <laughs> got a little smiley face on there. Looks like a little panda. <laughs> he's actually heading out to the current, this guy. I might just pick up a little bit of this slack. I'm just keeping tension on the main line while I pick up the slack with the reel. And then I'll actually be able to fight this fish on the reel. There we go. And fly reels do actually have drag, so you can use them like a normal reel. This is a solid fish, man. Yeah, man. Oh, look at the size of him. Oh, not quite, not quite. This is a big char. Big char. Slidey Mac. When you're ready. Ooh. Yeah, baby. Nice fish. That's a big nice. fish. Beautiful. Look at that. That is just nice. so sensational. Now, yeah. they're in pre spawning colour now, are they? Uh, yeah, so they're coming up here feeding on the salmon spawn. Yep. But in about, I don't know, about a month here, they're going to be completely orange and reds and greens, and the fins are going to be all really predominant white. The pink spots are going to push out, blue outline around the outside. Yeah, beautiful fish. And when does that happen? Uh, late August. Looks like I'm staying for a few more weeks. You get that on the big jobs? That sounds incredible. What a fish. Time to put him back, Jacob. They're such pretty fish. I can't believe they get even prettier. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have to call my wife Arctic Char from now on. Because <laughs> every day I can't believe she gets prettier. <laughs> Interesting fact, when moose, caribou and bears are hit by cars, buses, trucks and become roadkill, it's actually reported to authorities and they are considered property of the state. They're then collected and butchered by local volunteers and given to charities and other organisations as tasty morsels. Well, in the Alagnac River, one fish is the king. And Jet, that is? The king salmon. Absolutely, also known as Chinook. They grow into monster fish, big and red. Go for it, mate. I can see a few in the water back there. Oh, you're going for the big one. I'll go for the small one then.
Using the spotters, I can actually see a whole group of big kings holding here. About 10 fish. They stick out like the proverbial because they're bright red. What we're doing is just using jigs, bouncing them across the bottom, using the swing, and you basically have to get this jig right in the fish's face or he isn't gonna hit it. So every cast, that's gonna take a different trajectory, different line. You just keep casting until you get one of those fish to do its thing. I call this lure Purple Thunder. I tied it myself at the ATA Lodge and it's been my lucky charm. I've got kings and chum salmon on it already. And my lure, not quite traditional, but it's a fused jig head. And the reason I'm using it, that bit of orange there actually represents a salmon egg. And these big fish will eat eggs. That's what they're used to doing because they're matching the hatch. The reason for the lead, that's about half an ounce. The reason for that, it gets down this fast running water. Bounces along, they don't see the lead, they don't see the hook, they just see that. When they come in and have a look, I've also chosen this jig head because that hook is particularly strong and these fish are very, very big. Reel in jet, reel in jet. Oh, he nailed that. Oh, there's a big school of fish there. And I, I oh, hit the water way up that. twice jet and he absolutely smashed it. I'm just trying to keep the pressure on this fish. He's actually swimming upstream at the moment. It's a real plus. Oh, this is a big fish jet. This These fish, fish are the fish that you dream about when you come to this Ooh, yeah. oh, oh, big. Jet, wind your jig in. All right, jet to the front of the boat. This is a big fish. It's literally barreling downstream. He's about 80 metres behind the boat. He's gone way down around the corner. It's fine, we'll find him. This he, is epic. Imagine a Look at them all in fish. here too. Oh, look at them everywhere here. Imagine a freshwater fish. All right, I'm going to back salmon. up, start to gain on him. Yeah, I'm good. A salmon that can physically make you chase it downstream in a boat. That's really good, mate. Really good. How big do you think it is, Dad? Seriously, mate, I don't know, but when it porpoised, it actually looked like a dolphin. A big red dolphin, eh, mate? <laughs> He's just in there. Look at the size of him. And there's other fish in there, too. We're good, because now we're using the, the current to our advantage. The good thing about this, as he fights, he slowly tires. And as he tires, he's got a much better chance. This is only a very small rod and reel relative to this fish. It's a rate of travel inshore, 703 snapper. The reason I went 703 is because we can travel around the world with it. And the reel is a beautiful Stratic 4000 FI, 30 pound fins braid. My good friend who makes fins in the States got me this multicolour in 30. And I'm gonna say I'm loving it. There he is just there. So far this fish has dragged us over two miles downstream. And now he's heading back upstream. It's an epic battle with the king! To the right, Jacob, to the right! We are doing 4,200 revs. We are in the same spot due to the current. And the fish is hanging here. He's just holding his head in the current. And I have no control whatsoever at this point. But look at that red in the water. Oh, look at that fish. He's a beauty. I'm gonna throw it's a big fish. Nice. Oh, it is a big fish. She's getting close. She just wrapped me all the way around the boat. I'll come back to you, Jacob. Look Jager. at that! Oh, she's all right. rolled. Big white belly. I'm all coming right. back. Oh my god. This gosh, is it, Dad. this is it. You alright? Yeah, I think she might jump up on I the back she's here. She's just done a wrap on the lead. Oh no, she's she's there. The hook's in perfect. We're just gonna have to try and drift back on her. I'm gonna turn the motor off real quick. Hang on, let me get us out of this shallow stuff. It's just here. Alright. She's just there, mate. Take your time, take your time. Nice! Yes! There is. Look nice! At that! Yes! Yeah, baby! Look at yes! that! Yes! <laughs> Beautiful fish! fish. Look. That is gold. I'm just going to try. Do I need to start the engine? We're good. Here, Jet, Man take the net. Overboard. Yes! Well, Jacob, that is a monumental fish, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Now, even though we're uh, still in king season, it's, uh, it's going to be over soon and they're going to be spawning in a couple weeks here. So we really want to treat this hen well. Look how fat her belly is. She's full up of eggs and we really want to make sure that, that her genetics goes back into the system. Absolutely. Jed, have you ever seen a fight so epic? Oh, barely. <laughs> that was amazing. For a freshwater fish to do that. Oh. And we estimate this fish at around 25 pounds yep. considering the world record is almost 100 pounds. Four times bigger than this. Jacob, are they actually stoppable? <laughs> well, we stopped this one. Yeah, exactly right. One for us. That's why I come to Alaska, because that is the king, and I am very, very excited.
So Jacob, it's so important we look after beautiful fish like this. What's the plan from here? Uh, we're just going to spend some time with her, make sure that she kicks away from us and we're not just throwing her back in the river. Isn't so, she beautiful? Oh mate, so I'm just literally <laughs> cradling this fish. Yeah. And when she's ready, she'll swim, eh? Yep. Look at that little fish, look at that tail moving. I think she's just sitting there thinking, what was all that fuss about? There she oh, goes. there she goes. There she goes. So we've just taken a couple minutes out of our busy fishing schedule to check out one of the many beaver dams here on the Alagnac. And seriously, Jacob, did beavers, little busy beavers, build this massive lodge? Uh, not beavers, beaver, just one. What? Yep. No way, hence the saying. Seriously, check this out. You can see where the beaver have gnawed through this bit of wood. Check this out. That is ridiculous, with their teeth? Yeah, busy beaver. So, so what's the point of all this? Uh, this is his home. So basically what they'll do is they'll dam up the river. So they'll create this lake and then they'll be, build a lodge right in the middle of it. And I saw a hole there, so he actually gets access to this lodge from under the water. Yeah, so he swims down underneath and then it comes back above the water level. And underneath us, we're standing on a network of tunnels and rooms, just like prairie dogs. So this really isn't a beaver lodge. This is the beaver penthouse jet. <laughs> Can you imagine the time it would take to pick up every one of these sticks? I mean, some of them are only this big to make this mountain of timber. And there's a whole damn wall jet. <laughs> That's a pretty impressive beast, isn't it? Sure is. Unbelievable. Busy as a beaver. Interesting fact, while it is legal to shoot both brown and black bears in Alaska, it is illegal to wake one for its sleep so you can get a photo with it. You awake, mate? Don't do the wrong thing. It is an overcast morning in Alaska on the Alagnac River and today we're doing something very, very different. This is JD. JD, you've been here three times yep. to ATA. Have you ever done the hike for pike? Never. Well, there you go. I didn't even know there was pike in this region, but there's a lake in those woods. And JD, we're going to go catch him. Mate, I'm excited. JD's always excited. <laughs> This is the true joy of coming to Alaska. It's all about seeing wild grizzly bears in their natural environment. This guy here, probably not quite fully mature. I'm guessing around 300 kilos maybe. And he is fishing in the river, looking for the same thing we are, salmon. And one of the true bucket list experiences for any person on the planet is to see a beast like that. Seriously, I'm a very, very lucky camper. That is awesome. JD's a bit of a bear. He's a cuddly one though. <laughs> well Johnny, this is where the boat ride stops and the hiking starts. Well, I'm a bit worried about that, Paul. You'll be fine, mate. <laughs> At worst, if it all gets too hard, you can carry me. <laughs> <laughs> Put the young fellow in the back. And the old warrior here is actually carving a path through the wilderness. Which way do we go? <laughs> <laughs> I think we go this way. <laughs> it's like the like thing of Dad's army. <laughs> that first step's a good one, Johnny. Watch yourself. That's it. Got it. Now apparently we just gotta to get to the edge of the weed here. That's where the pikes love to live. This is a very, very large lake. We're only going to touch like 1% of 1% of it today. We're just going to cast our lures through these edges, see if we can't find some pikes. Let's do it, JD. I've got a fish. Fish, fish. on. You got him? I got him, Johnny. I'll get mine out of the way, mate. Bit of persistence, and he's got a bit of weight too. All I did there, just cast this broken back rapala up along the weed edge. And I've covered the same bit of ground a few times, but I just figured fish would move into this bay to feed. That's a pretty good start, eh, Johnny? Mate, I'm coming over to have a look. It was almost worth the walk. <laughs> oh, look at that. Ooh. Oh, it's a nice fish. Wow. This is a solid pike. 
This is a really, really nice fish now. The guides at the lodge were saying the fish here don't generally grow massive, but I'm here to tell you, this is a really nice northern pike. John, have you ever seen one before? Never seen one, mate. Well, you're about to, there he is. Have a look at that. And that is a magnificent fish. Now, the first northern pike I ever caught, guess where it was, Johnny? Go on. Amsterdam. You're kidding. Dead set in a place called the Red, <laughs> the red Light District. If you can hold yeah. that, I'm the first bloke to ever go to the Red Light District and be happy to have caught something. <laughs> it was a magnificent northern pike. Look at this, look at that fish there. Beautiful, that is just splendid. They are sensational. I'm just going to get the weed off him. They're solid fish, aren't they? Look at those teeth, Johnny. That's beautiful. They are just amazing. Just get the weed off. These things are the ultimate freshwater predator in the northern part of the world. And in Europe, these fish are just revered. These are the fish people love to catch. They love these rapalas and they also love taking the fly off the surface. Is that right? VMC single, and that is just easy to get out. So good for the fish. So perfect all round. This pike is going back. What a magnificent prehistoric beast. Oh, and, and the pike too, JD. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Off you go, mate. Look at that. Well done, JD. Hey, I'll tell that's, you that's what. That's a good fish, mate. It's a better one than the last Woo one. Oh, that wouldn't be hard. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> He's, oh, it's a good fish. That's a good fish. I've got a bit of an elbow tangle here. Just take your time, because he might do the bolt. Yeah, yeah, I can feel him. Look at the size of that thing. Oh, it's a big fish. Now, these things, it's all about the hit, and then they get up close and personal. They shake. Just be careful, be careful. That's it. Mate, if you grab that rod, I'll go with two hands. Oh, how's the size of that thing? Look at hey, that, mate. JD! Hey. Hey. Oh, hey, oh, that is fantastic. Have a look at it. That is awesome. I'm just going to open that up for you. You don't want me to say it was bigger than yours? Uh, well, I think it might be. <laughs> I think it might actually be bigger than mine, JD. Oh, no, it could be. That is, you know what? That is way bigger than mine. How's the weight of mate, that beast? I am pumped. Did you ever think a little boy growing up in Hawthorne near Adelaide would be in a lake in Alaska? Catch a northern pike? Never. What actually Never. made you come to this beautiful part of the world? Well, I got talked into it initially by Shane Mensford. And then you come and you met me. And then I came the second time and uh, with my lady fishing. And uh, somehow you taught me to come in a third time. Well, I'm glad I did, mate, because that is a fish worth travelling all the way around the world for. That is awesome. JD, you're an absolute star, my friend. I love your work. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our incredible journey through Alaska and down the magnificent Alagnac River. It has just been sensational. Once again, it blew my expectations literally out of the water. Do yourself a favour. Come to this incredible part of the world. Experience it for yourself. Contact my good friend, Gary Barmby, Angling Adventures, and seriously, put yourself in this picture, ATA Lodge. Don't forget those words.